All right, so the question that came in was, um, I've been in the medical field a long time now and just uh, started to learn auditing. I am still at times struggling with risk. We use 95 guidelines and I go back and forth with low to moderate. Sometimes the MDM is not there even with a uh, prescription like uh, in a rash for example example, some can be problematic and others are not. Even if a prescription is given like ointment, should that really be considered moderate risk? So it's really good that uh, we just talked about the guidelines that um, you know, Jennifer gave us a highlight of the 95 and the 97 guidelines because you mentioned that you're doing 95 guidelines. Well, the thing is about medical decision making, then, um, you know, sometimes uh, you'll find that it, it it's not going to make as much of a difference as you think. So the main codes that we're talking about is uh, 99213 and 99214, which are for an established patient. But the thing about an established patient, though, uh, you only have to have two of the three components, right? So actually, if you're struggling with medical decision making, you could toss it. Right. You, you know, you could have the. It depends, though, because you always want to go to the highest. But, you know, just know that you only have to have two of the three components. OK. And 99213 is low complexity, whereas 99214 is moderate complexity. And there is a lot of am, ambiguity, am, ambiguity. I said that like three times today. It's a gray area. So if we scroll up a little bit, I can hear ambiguity, it. Ambiguity. Ambiguity. Thank you very much. Lorraine has truly missed my torturing words. <laughs> I know she has. <laughs> okay, so in comparison to um, established patients, though, we do have to consider 99203 and 99204, which are new patients. Now, with a new patient, you have to have all three components, okay? And that means medical decision making plays a, a big role in deciphering whether you're going to be able to use 99203 and 99204. Now, there are some time, uh, places, and you may have heard this if you've been around in coding for a while, and it just makes you want to roll your eyes like a teenager when they say, oh, well, we always assign 99203 so that we know that if we get audited we're okay or it, it's like well no that's not acceptable either it's just as bad to undercode as to overcode and you want to get to the highest specificity you have to remember we code for statistical purposes not just to get paid okay and <clears throat> so therefore if you continue to under code and you don't code using the proper code, that's a red flag for the auditors also because it says you don't understand how the e &M system works and how to level them. So now that we know the difference between established and what's needed for an established patient as well as what's needed for a new patient, let's look at how we're going to decide the difference between low complexity and moderate complexity for our MDM, which is what we call medical decision making. And this is also a, a huge question that happens sometimes with testing but more so in the real world okay you you hear this it's like well you know they gave a script so all of it you know that's a uh, higher medical decision making automatically it doesn't matter what the script was for so in review i was able to go in and look at um the encoder that we use a lot with find which is find a code with cco and uh, uh, they have this great graphic that they created so if you use find a code you'll be able to see it and it gives us a, a quick little detail of the difference between the uh, how to determine 95 and 97 guidelines okay so at the top is uh you know uh for uh, Let's see. It, see, it says examination 95 documentation guidelines. 
right there. Okay, so again, you can go to find a code and you'll have access to this great little tool that uh, that I've used. So let's go ahead and scroll a little bit more and um, kind of get to the meat of, of what our person is asking. So the medical decision making, it does, if you use 95 or 97 guidelines, uh, you can use a fabulous tool that the e &M University suggests uh, that you use, and it is called the Medical Decision uh, Making Point System. Okay, that's pretty much what all everybody uses is this point system. It, it isn't uh, well, he gave a script, so all of a sudden it's now moderate decision making instead of low. And this is how that point system works. Now you can jump out to EM University and and look at that. They're known for you know great being a great resource for EM. Uh, let's see, the nature and number of clinical problems. They are qualified, okay, and we call them problem points. And then look right here, we've got self-limited, established problem, established problem, worsening, new problem, but we're not doing any additional workup, and a new problem with additional workup. So you have to read the documentation, and then you determine, all right, we have a new problem, we have a rash, right? Um, it is not an established problem, it's a new problem, but there's no additional workup planned, okay? We're not going to go run some lab tests uh, or anything. We are going to give a, a script, but we are not going to uh, do a workup. So they get three points for that. And let's go ahead and scroll down and look at um, the next criteria is data points. Right, so what's the amount of uh, complexity for the, div the data that the provider has to look at? Now, if we have a rash, okay, and, it, and we're not going to do any additional workup, but our patient is, has an autoimmune disease, right, that's going to that's going to entail you, the provider, looking at more information, right? Because a rash with an autoimmune disease is, hey, that's that could be a trigger or something else. But if it's just a rash that that he's thinking contact dermatitis, and he figures, you know, after he talks to you, you realize, hey, I did change laundry to soaps out there, or maybe you went out in the woods and you got into, you know, got some prickly heat, or you got a little poison ivy or something like that. Uh, you know, that's that's not going to make uh, the decision making any higher versus a person that has a comorbidity or something else going on. So let's look at the data that he's going to review. And this is why, as a coder, it's so important to have the, um, the knowledge of disease process, right? Understanding that a rash for someone that has an autoimmune system like RA is different than a rash that has somebody that has poison ivy. Okay, so if we're reviewing the data, you get a point for uh, looking at clinical lab tests or something. So in this scenario, the first scenario, our, our patient has a rash. We're not looking at any labs, right? Uh, review of any radiological tests, things like that. Nope. Nope, nothing there. So uh, we're looking at echoes, cardiac uh, results, uh, the catheterizations. Nope, nope. Uh, discuss test with performing physician. Nope, nope, we're not doing that. Uh, let's see, independent review of imaging, tracing, or specimen. That that means that um, the 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 provider is reviewing any of the lab results that had come in. Decision to obtain old records. Okay, now nah, this is a rash. No, uh, and then we have review and summation of old orders. Now. Let's 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 throw something in here. Let's say that the patient says, you know what, I had a rash like this one time before, and the uh, doctor gave me a script for it, but I don't remember what it was. And I remember I got really sick after I used it, and they told me never to use it again. 
oh, okay, well, let's go back and look at your old documentation uh, and say, yeah, that was the doctor that was here before you, but it's still the same clinic. Okay, so he's going to go look at some old records. Medical decision making just went up. It's not just that simple rash. Now we have a person that's possibly allergic to something that we can't remember, you know, that they can't remember, and we sure don't want to give them something again. Okay, so that could raise it, but if we're not doing any of this that we just mentioned, then there's no data to review, All right? So let's scroll down and, and look. We'll, we'll look at both scenarios. Yeah, we got to look at uh, some old information because, you know, we, we might be allergic to some versus the person, nah, we, we just got a rash. So now for the medical decision, uh, you have to have two out of three for it to qualify, okay? Notice in the black, in the bold underneath this table, it takes two out of three elements to qualify for any level of medical decision making when you use this point system, okay? So don't get that confused with how we say key components two or three for established and new, okay? We're kind of using the same terminology, but it's two separate things. So now let's go back and say, uh, we had, how many problem points did we have? Didn't we have three, I think? And data points, we have none, none. So we have three or really none. So uh, we got to have two and the risk, mm, it's pretty minimal, right? We got a rash, that's minimal. So you have to have two of the, of the three. So it's going to be straightforward uh, uh, complexity if we can't get up to moderate, okay, this is this is low. We're not gonna be able to get into that anything higher. But if we had to review for the guy that was allergic to something, oh, that's different, right? Our problem points, we had three, and we got, I think, two or three, I can't remember now, but let's say we had three uh, because uh, we had to review, let's, let's just say. Uh, so we now have two, and we have moderate risk. Right, because this person, if they were to give them a medication that they'd had a reaction for in the past, they could have more of a severe reaction because they could go into anaphylaxis and everything. So that's a moderate. Something as simple as the person being allergic to something, not aware of it, and the doctor needs to go and review the chart. Okay. So there you go. But you only have to have two of the three to get that. Now, Overall MDM, uh, again, uh, I think I used uh, an example in my head when I was thinking about uh, this, but if we have one, if we got two points out of data and we've got moderate complexity, we got three, and then moderate ri risk, it would be moderate complexity. Okay, so you can see how quickly you could turn to, eh, it's just a simple rash and, you know, it's, it's prickly heat. No big deal. You know, everybody gets that in the summer, right? To, oh, complexity just went up because I get to, I have to go back and review because they're allergic to something and they don't remember what it is. Okay. All right. And I think that's the end of it. Medical mm -hmm. decision making, once you get the, once you get the hang of it, it's, it's, much easier than you think. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.